So tell people what the problem is and how they can fix the problem. Okay, so the the scene uh, this is from a phone. Most people who use Raspberry Pi use power supply from a phone. Okay, Raspberry Pi doesn't come with power supply, so they use one with the phone. The standard for older phones is probably only about 500 milliamps. So that's how much current it can supply, or how much, effectively how much power it's going to supply. So one of the, the common causes is you're, you're using a power supply which is not rated enough to supply enough current to the, part, to the Raspberry Pi. You can buy more powerful ones, I've actually got one with me. Um, but the, thing, the key thing to look at, if you look at, as a, this one's 1.2, if you look at the rating on it, it's either been milliamps or an amps. Ideally, you want something up to about two amps if you're going to drive a lot of extra things um, off of the standard USB interface doesn't um, you know, will support lo lots of different cards. You need basically more powerful um, power supply to go with it. So the ones on mobile phones are great. They work for normal Pi. I've got a Pi with me which powers the screen as well. Kind of just about works, but I normally use a more powerful power supply to go with. Look on CPC Funnel or any of the online websites. You see the crucial, crucial thing to look at is the rating like the milliamps. You want to be 1200, 1500 or, or 2000 amps. Which is, yeah, two hours. So I've got two questions. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a power supply that's not powerful enough, yeah. will the Raspberry Pi work at all? It'll work, yes, that's right. So it'll work just as it is. So, so one of the key ways of finding out it's a power supply is to disconnect everything else you're not using. If it's powering the screen off it, even things like USB, mice, etc., will draw a bit of current. So basically disconnect as much as possible. The Raspberry Pi, forget the exact specs, will work in a fairly basic phone type charger, but it will struggle once you start adding more things on. So the key thing is to remove things and then see whether the problem um, goes away. Okay, and the second question was, can you use a, what if the power supply is too powerful, like if it was a three well, amp? Well, 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 not at all. It'll, it's a bit, bit, uh, basically, the power supply will only draw what current you need off it. So if you've got a three amp power supply, and you only use one and a half amps, that's always going to draw. So it's not going to waste the power, it can't, you know, it'll only take off the power that it needs. So yes, if you want to be absolutely sure, if you're buying a power supply, buy the most powerful one you can. Two amps, I think, is the, is the kind of standard, the higher power one. Great, thank you very much, James. And do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you've done with your Raspberry Pi before you go to Okay. The <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I've, I've only fairly recently, sorry, uh, my name's James, um, my first time here. I've only fairly recently got a Pi. Um, I do a variety of things, my background's electronics, so I've done a lot of electronics in the past, but not much with the Raspberry Pi. Um, we've been messing around with things like doing a door opening project using key fobs, because I've got a mill and we've got handy for, we want to make, make a space. Maker spaces are makers, it's not just about Raspberry Pis, it's about woodworking, we've got lathes and kill and everything else. So to get access to that makerspace, we've used um, key fob operators and all things. So we've, we've used Raspberry Pis in that. I, I basically mess around with them. I, I've started on a co club at my local primary school. We haven't used Raspberry Pis there yet, but we're, that's one of the things we're, we're looking at. Um, so my main kind of interest, I guess, is, is interfacing. Um, I was just to mention one, one of the thing I was actually going to talk about. You mentioned Dicky Holmes. Um, does anybody know what broadband for rural north is? Bar? Have you, have you heard of it? Just recently. Yeah, so you have to buy from Lancaster, so does only Lancaster mean Valley? Ray Village? Yeah, Ray, 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 Ray's got it, for instance. So basically, I, I stay just the east of Lancaster. Uh, about five miles outside Lancaster, I run a mill building, it's a commercial building, office spaces. Broadband speeds are appalling, we're really bad at home. There's this community based project, there's a charity called Broadband for Rural North, you can look it up, B4 asset, there we go there. So it's, it's a bit, you could say this is the net, this is the, this is like Raspberry Pi doing networking. This is entirely community based, it's not for profit any future money that they make goes back into the community. But the amazing thing about this is, nobody knows what internet speeds are like. Standard B2 line, you get it home, you're lucky to get eight. If you live in the country, you get about two. This is a thousand. The don't the university is, Lancaster University does not have gigabit to most of the desks. 
So I've now got at home and for business faster internet than the university. Yeah, this is okay. It only, it only works in the, the, the Loon Valley because that's what they're doing. It's just to bring attention. Completely community done. We dug all the fibre in ourselves. We use contractors to do it. Yeah. So if you live, if you know in the Loon Valley, so that's basically Holton, Ray, up towards. I've actually got the Clapham now. Um, this is an amazing community run project. Um, and you can see actually there's quite a nice little dial there. This being normal BT one says about eight. BT fiber uh, is about twenty. Yeah, so it's up to nine hundred and fifty. So of course, um, other internet service providers are available as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's very to draw the parallels. This is entirely community run, just out of part, uh, uh, just out of part. It's a joke because I work for an ISP. Do you? Yeah. Do you work for? Oh, there's no BTs. They're, they're much faster. No, it's not BTs. Uh, no, they're much faster than uh, that. Well, it's, it's like I've been seeing no business. Get him off the microphone! What's, yeah. the, hang on, what's the contention ratio? <laughs> contention ratio. There isn't any. There isn't any. This is, right, so this is basically the back, well, okay, the backbone of this is proper switched Ethernet. It's the 10. Slovakia, that's normal. Sorry? In Slovakia, that's normal. Yeah, okay. So, it's so, so, so basically, so it's 10 gigabit, it's 10 gigabit to a 24 port switch. So yes, in theory, if you're capable of all 24 ports running flat out, you'll get only about 500 megabits. So the, cont I mean, the contention rate, you, know, you will not notice it in, in, in practice. You will you basically pretty much always get 950 to 1,000 uh, megabits. And it's upload as well as download. So if you want to do anything remotely, you want to send videos off somewhere else, yeah. And you can catch the rest of the fighter as well.